muy, muy buenas tardes a todos ustedes. Eh, me presento de, de nueva cuenta. Este, nos vimos, por supuesto, en la inauguración de este curso, pero bueno, no está de más presentarme. Soy Valeria Valero Pie, eh, coordinadora nacional de Monumentos Históricos de Lina y pues otra vez tendré ocasión de eh, moderar el cierre pues de este curso, ¿no? de este curso que nos ha implicado 10 días, cuyo título es From Space to Data, Smart Survey Methods in Architecture and Archaeology. Y bueno, pues eh, como se programó, ¿no? como está dentro de los, eh, del, del programa del curso, el cierre eh, se pensó con esta conferencia eh, in, que impartirán pues, nuestros especialistas eh, profesores ¿no? eh, que vienen de Hungría ¿no? y que han estado, por supuesto, al frente eh, de este curso. Eh, y bueno, los presento de nueva cuenta, es el eh, profesor, el doctor Solf Vasarov, que es cabeza del Departamento de Arquitectura Explorativa de la Universidad de Tecnología y Economía de Budapest, Hungría. Creo que el micrófono no se está escuchando tan bien. Y el maestro Mor Bendegus Takats del Instituto de Arqueología de la Universidad Católica Pazman in Peter. Y bueno, pues hoy eh, para el cierre de este curso nos presentarán esta conferencia magistral que lleva por título From Space to Data and Back. Smart Solutions, Knowledge Transfer Based on Field Experience. Y bueno, pues sin más preámbulo, eh, pues dejaré espacio y el micrófono a nuestros especialistas. And uh, thank you very much. Yeah, the microphone is all yours. Thank you. Thank you, Valeria, for, for the introduction. And our 10 days group came to the end. This lecture, with this lecture, we will close this beautiful session. And uh, it was uh, very honestly, very, very tiring for us, <laughs> but not boring for a moment, <laughs> never. And, uh, and now we would like to summarize uh, what, you, what you learned and also summarize what we tried to teach you. And we collected some important, uh, important points, what we mentioned or, or not yet mentioned during the course. And, uh, and uh, also we will talk about you, about, yeah. your, about your successes, about your, your results. Ho hopefully you will join us. <laughs> On the first slide, it was a, quest it was a question for us, why, why we are here. Uh, because, as we mentioned on the first day, we have a special interest on, uh, on this topic, what we, what we talked about. We have already uh, more than 25 years experience, field experience. We had a lot of field work in the Middle East, also in Central America, in Mexico, and in Europe. At the university we have, uh, at least at my university, we, we have special projects, specialized design studios dealing with, uh, with these regions, dealing with crisis situations. And in the, in the cold past also we, we started with a special, uh, special group of subjects uh, aiming the crisis architecture. And of course the Hungary Hub program uh, 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 was really helpful for this whole project and in the Hungarian presence in, in Mexico and, or, and this, this course was one, uh, one item, let's say, of this, uh, of this general support from the Hungarian government. And at last but not least, we like Mexico. <laughs> that's, <laughs> why, that's why we are here. And Mexicans. <laughs> and the world famous gastronomy. We just started to learn. <laughs> I collated some uh, some slides uh, as a kind of as a kind of summary. Uh, what are the main uh, main cases for uh, for this crisis architecture, or, or how how we have uh, why we have to deal with these topics? Because uh, there are 
earthquakes, as you know, as you know for sure, there is always an urgent, urgent need. You have to save life, you have to save communities, you have to save architecture, especially heritage. That is, uh, that is a, that is a case with, with which you are really familiar. We in Europe, not really. We have big earthquakes uh, in every 300 years, maybe, or, or. Or, uh, or so it is not so not so dramatic in all cases. But when we <coughs> when we came for the first time in 2017, it was really shocking for us what we what we saw. Or tsunamis. It is also far from Hungary, but uh, maybe you remember the great tsunami in Sri Lanka. It was approximately 20 years ago, when uh, hundred thousands of people passed away. And uh, huge communities were also erased from the uh, from the earth. And at that time, uh, there was also a Hungarian presence. A small foundation started to recreate uh, a small community. It was very very successful, and that's why we we are also a little bit familiar with this topic. Or war, civil war. There is an extra danger, and we presented for you many examples uh, from Syria. I just uh, pick up this, this picture from the famous World Heritage Site, the Crac de Chevalier. You see the photo, the, the, the date. It was maybe in the forthcoming, was done uh, by, by a Syrian uh, engineer, the, the engineer, structural engineer of the castle. And the photo was done by him just a few days after recapturing the, the castle from the uh, uh, from the fundamentalists. Or terror attacks. There is also an urgent need because uh, it is not, not a section of a war. A war is also unexpected, but the terror attacks are much more unexpected. And I didn't, I didn't present it previously, any, any photo from the famous Aleppo. There was a long-term battle with uh, until now not cleared really not clear cases and not clear situations. This photo was taken by me or by one of my, my friend few, few years ago, very shortly after recapturing the, the city. And, uh, and you, you can see these big, big craters uh, on, the, on the former city center. And that was a terrible, terrible story that someone, for, for sure, not the army, uh, did huge tunnels and uh, and exploded from down the heritage heritage sites and uh, and in this in this case you, you you cannot do anything the the whole heritage is completely disappeared you cannot find any stone and this is a very special case it is not war it is not a war case it is a terror terror case but as we as we recognized when we were there for two times that the the city and uh, the city came back. I mean, the life came back to the city. People uh, removed the the ruins of the of the war and the terrorist attacks and started to started to recreate first their life. And uh, and now there is a there is a long discussion how to how to do what to do. For example, on this on this on this building, you can see the ruins of a former. Uh, French building it was built during the French mandate, and there was a huge discussion about it. It is a heritage or not anymore. It is important for the uh, for a recreated identity or not. And uh, and besides this terrible uh, terrible uh, conditions, there are interestingly so theoretical or either uh, theoretical questions and questions for identity also coming up. Uh, we offered this, uh, this site for our students two, two years ago, and there was an international competition uh, about recreation, the new, new city center of Aleppo, and one of our uh, uh, Syrian and Jordanian students won this competition, and uh, we were really very, very happy about it. Or the amortization, just uh, is a problem everywhere, and uh, like uh, this is our, yeah, this is our favorite Egyptian project, the Hassan Fathi mission, and where we face this problem. Uh, and this is a 
typical problem of the vernacular heritage everywhere because it is very fragile. These buildings uh, were built from mud brick. They were not for, for eternity. You cannot save it after a uh, different, uh, after a given period, after a, after a given lifespan. And uh, what to do? And this is also a crisis situation. The only what you can do to document it, to, to take photos, because every photo in this neighborhood is part of the history. And, uh, and but this is a very, very typical problem. Or demolishing with or without any purpose, because sometimes people are demolishing their buildings, they don't know it is a heritage, or they know it is a heritage, it is a danger for them because they cannot do anything without special permissions. That could happen also. Or they just want to live better. This is also Egypt in the famous New Gurna village designed by Hassan Fathi, where the people started to remove the, let's say, the World Heritage buildings because they were not any more good. better now? Okay. okay, let's go ahead. Another kind of crisis, not having enough stuff. That is what we modeled here in the past nine days. Uh, if you are alone or if you don't have the capacity, you don't, you have friends of course, but they are not always available for, <laughs> for making survey. And that is also what we, what we experienced. For example, in Syria, Benny is on the, on the top and one of the worker is uh, stabilizing the ladder, which has only two legs and, uh, and was broken in many, <laughs> many parts. And there is another thing which is very, very close to me, uh, the industrial catastrophes. Those, are, those happens, especially in Europe, very rarely. But uh, something happened 12 years ago uh, in my hometown. It was a very famous industrial catastrophe in 2010, in October, when uh, the so-called red slum, which is, a, which is a product of the aluminum production, this is the red, red mud, which, which is not needed anymore, and one huge storage, the dam of the storage was, was I don't know, somehow broken and the billions of cubic meter uh, very very poison uh, liquid was was uh, uh, came out and affected this one and uh, 500 500 houses were were demolished completely 2000 people uh, left their homes and it happened in front of my eyes my parents was here 10 people died and it was really a terrible terrible thing and uh, and also important heritage buildings were also damaged and but we cannot touch the area because this red slum was very very uh, it was a it was a very it was very dangerous uh, and uh, and uh, in front of eyes we don't had drones at that time we don't had this uh, structure from motion technology and we we were not able to to get closer to this uh, to this catastrophe and in front of our eyes were removed a lot of lot of valuable things and also there was an interesting question because uh, because few hundred people decided to stay here in the in the same uh, in the same village and they got new buildings but an endless discussion started what they had and they 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 said we had two televisions three bicycles two cars and a huge uh, and a huge uh, dining room, but uh, there no one has any provision for that, and because no one was able to to go back to the buildings, and I I guess with our uh, current current smart technology we will be able even to document the current the, the state how it was directly after the catastrophe, and there are very special crisis crisis situations dealing with the energetics, energetics nowadays, uh, 
Maybe you catch this, this news a few days ago. The, fa the world famous Greta Thunberg was catched by the German police. Uh, but why? What is this Lützerath uh, cola? It is the lignite. It is the poorest uh, quality of, uh, of, uh, of coal. And uh, Germans are, you know, pioneers on using alternative energies, but they, they have still the power plants uh, with, with this lignite. And uh, for, for this reason, they have to remove very huge territories, complete cities or, or, uh, or millions of hectares. And uh, that means that the traditional landscape of some parts of Germany looks like this. And after mining this lignite, like this. They have these huge power plants, and uh, instead of the, of the lignite, uh, these beautiful six, of course. But for that, and I, I, I also wasn't, uh, I, I didn't knew about, uh, about this story. I just catch this one in the past, uh, past days. During the past decades, uh, they, I mean, the German, uh, German mining companies, they removed dozens of, of settlements, completely they demolished, completely uh, many settlements like this. They had this beautiful church from the 19th century. Okay, it is not medieval, but part of, uh, of a community, and that happens in 2018. But still, they removed uh, medieval castles, and now they are, that was the, the aim of this protest, protest to, to protect this, uh, this village, Lützerath. And, uh, and that is interesting, that's the world famous former one pilot, Michael Schumacher, was born in that village. And his house, his, fir his first go-kart uh, thing will be also demolished. And that's why they had this huge, huge protest. And, um, and what I read uh, about, the, about the background of this story, that the mining companies are very, very strong. They have to produce energy. They need this lignite, this material, to burn. It is very unhealthy, of course, and it, it, has a good, it hasn't a good efficiency. And, but for that purpose, they have to really to remove not single buildings and villages. And, uh, and the German authorities, like the, like the INA, they have a lot of, lot of similar uh, uh, authorities. They don't have the capacity to, to do anything. And these this villages are disappearing without any documentation, any survey, nothing. And that is, I think, also a, is an interesting crisis situation, not coming from the nature, not coming from any war situation or industrial catastrophe. It is something else. And nowadays, uh, you know, our situation in Europe, we don't have Russian gas and Russian oil, thanks to the sanctions from Brussels anymore. And uh, every, and uh, most of the countries, uh, also Germany, started to giving up the climate, uh, climate goals and climate aims. And that's why they restarted again this mining, mining activity. I think it is a terrible story, and, uh, and again, something, uh, a new element must be put on the crisis, crisis architecture uh, paletta, and, uh, and that is again something what we, what we, have, to, what we have to do in the, in the future. But what was, the, what was our basic aim, or what's, what's the aim to learn something in, from, this, uh, from this field? A need for a documentation, of course, because the, sometimes the, the amortization of, I mean, the building is more quick than the speed of us and the speed of restoration, the speed of uh, refurbishment. And it's sad to say, but, uh, but everything cannot be saved. Of course, it, we have to face this, uh, this problem, at least thanks to, to different, different technologies. Uh, at least we, we can have or we could have uh, a, good, a good documentation. In a case of crisis, of course, there is an urgent need for, doc for documentation. And in a case of planned demolishing, like, uh, like this German, German case, there is also a need for documentation. And don't forget the scientific purposes. Also, we, we talked about it in a few days, that uh, if it is, if we are in a unique situation, there is no earthquake, no urgent case, just 
we are planning to documenting something, a typology of facades or typology of, of vaulted churches in Oaxaca or in Morelos or anywhere, then if it is well planned and we have the, the fit technology, then we could have, we can have an accurate and, and informative catalog or what, uh, what, we, what we really want. And of course, that was also, also mentioned several times by us, also in the everyday practice are also required cost-effective and time-consuming solutions. That means that uh, we need uh, a lot of times, uh, we, we don't have too much time to make surveys or to make observations and, and we, are, we are on the way, we have, uh, we, we, have to, we have to visit two, three or more sites per day or per two days and we have to be really very quick with, uh, with recognizing the environment, uh, 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 capturing the data and, and generating or, or required results. And what is really projected during, during the process? To have the relevant data, architectural, spatial, archaeologic, archaeological, any kind of data. And another important thing is to be able to survey without big stuff or high-tech tools or, or, uh, or, or high-tech technology. That was our starting point. That's why we didn't learn about laser scanning because you have it and you can, you can use it if you have it, of course. And that's why we didn't uh, learn about, about other, other kind of technologies because they, are, they, are, they cannot be used by you, by most of you, without uh, doing uh, a bigger investigation. And of course, it is also projected to be able to generate the relevant data. Benny will explain, explain you uh, what, what were the, the most important outputs. And of course, to do it fast in big number and accurate as, as, as it is possible. And, uh, and uh, as we also, also mentioned many times, the importance of choosing the fit technology if the laser scanning is the only, only possible way. And if you have it, then choose it, because there is no, no better technology currently. But it has its weaknesses and its advantages, of course. Important to plan the survey and the whole process. What do you need, really? Not doing survey just, just, for, just for fun, maybe, but uh, it is for sure useless for the future. And to know, to be sure, that the chosen method is, is, uh, is good enough. Not the best, maybe, because you don't have always the best tools, the best, uh, the best moment, and the best light circumstances. It's, it's, it's never perfect. And what are the wanted, wanted results? This is also important to know before, before you start. Just to have a 3D model, and you learned also, I think, enough about it, the required numbers of the pictures or, the re or, or, or what you have. You have a, an older phone or an older camera or, or a good camera. It depends on, on many things, but, uh, but it's really important to know before, before, before you or we start, what's the main aim? What is the wanted result? What is the, what, and for that purpose, you have to know the whole, the whole process. Just to have a 3D model, it is a very rare thing. For what? Just maybe to, to, to for archive, for special archives, or for a special catalog, it could, it could happen. But as we discussed uh, also, to have a mass model, for example, based on drone photos, based on a, a very small number of drone photos, it is a real thing for architects, for example, to, or for architectural competitions. If you are invited to a competition or if you want to participate on a competition and it is going in a 1 to 500 scale, then you don't need anything else, just, just the terrain model and the mass model of the environment. It is, of course, an advanced level if you need real plans, and in that case, you really must have a good plan for the, for the whole process if you want to to export uh, relevant data for permit plans or building plans, for that you need for sure a better accuracy, like uh, in a case of a mass, 
of, of a mass model. And again, another case is a scientific documentation. Uh, I was also, uh, if, if I was here for, for uh, several times previously, we visited many sites, many, uh, many, uh, many churches during the work, during the restoration works, and I saw a lot of, uh, lot of documentations. But there were, uh, and it, it isn't the critics, of course, but there were all building plans. Everything was simplified on the plans. Maybe in some cases uh, the, the, the contractors uh, doesn't have the correct geometry. They had just simplified plan areas for investigations and they started to work because it was an urgent case. And no one had uh, this idea before that an earthquake, an earthquake, a huge earthquake like the 2007 one will come and most of the, your valuable churches in Morelos and some in Puebla will be destroyed. No one had it. And, uh, but there is, I think, a big, big difference between the building plans, having the, 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 the relevant data for the further investigation, for the areas to be restored, to demolish, to remove, to change, to reinforce. And another thing is, the, is, the, is an accurate documentation having the, the accurate geometry, all the, all the building phases, all the, all the changes on the facades, all the, all the remains of, uh, of everything. But this is a rare thing before a catastrophe or before a, an investigation to have, to have something, something like that. But I think uh, using the smart technology, uh, uh, it, is, it could be the close future, or, or it could be a plan for your, for your authorities to, to, make a, to make a concept, to make a list having the most important heritage, and to start to create an, a, an, a, an accurate, accurate documentation. And of course, and uh, <coughs> sorry, there is also another, other possibility, and we had, uh, or you had a presentation about it, to how to use and for what purposes can be used the, the, your, your, your captured da data, not only for scientific documentations or, 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 or plans, also for, for further projects like, uh, like uh, visualizations or, 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 or interactive elements within an exhibition or, or at, uh, at, at the sites. And I also, I, 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 I presented you some, some of our examples, how to use the digitized, digitized environment to show the different periods of, a, of a early Christian church in, in, in Cologne, in Germany. Or if you have the scanned or digitized data, you can, you can show, this is our Sir, one of our Syrian examples, you can, you can show for, for the audience, for decision makers, for, for the participants, what, what we are looking for. We have, we have the current state, we have and and that and the middle middle one the middle picture is the is the is the projected one the re, the virtually reconstructed one and uh, if you have once the data and it that is that is very good for 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 really different uh, different outputs or we al I also showed you this this example we scan just the junction of a, of a Roman Roman city in uh, in Western Hungary and uh, we started to build up uh, uh, a 3D model, and finally we use this, uh, use this data for a show, for, uh, for, uh, for a remarkable element of the new temporary exhibition of the, of the, of the city. Or if we have a good data, this is a German example, Aachen, the, fam the world famous residence of Charlemagne, where we use the good and the new archaeological data to recreate or to reconstruct the whole building process of this, of this, uh, of this important uh, world, world heritage site. And it is also, it is also possible. And, uh, and there were previously a lot of, lot of different, uh, uh, different reconstructions. But uh, that was the first one which was really based on the, on the archaeological data, on some scanned and, and digitized uh, digitized remains. 
or the or the other one, this is a very large format uh, project, let's say the, the ancient Cologne, the Roman, the Roman city, where all the 3D models were built up on the on the periodized and scanned, but the scanned and digitized remains just to show for the audience its importance and the connection between the science, between the currently used uh, technology and, uh, and, uh, and the reconstruction of the proud of the governor's palace of, of the Roman, uh, Roman Cologne. Or in an object scale, uh, what, you, what you learned in the, in the past two, three days, how to, how to digitize an object, that was an also a very interesting experiment done by us for the Museum of Fine Arts in Budapest, where we, with really within maybe two days, we digitized the most important 30 objects and, uh, and uh, using uh, 3D Studio Max and, uh, and, and other uh, connecting softwares, we uh, recreated the original function and animated the original function of the object and showed for the for the audience on screens, or uh, or we reconstructed their uh, their uh, process, how how they were uh, carved and how they were melted or how they were colorized, and this whole thing because this is the this is the secret. And as I mentioned you during this during this presentation, there is a monitoring and uh, and uh, and the visitors really spending many time front of the screens, they are, those are not, not just screens having a slideshow, those has uh, relevant information for the, for the audience, for the publics, and, but all this, all this uh, animation is based on the data, on the, on the captured uh, uh, views, on the, on the photos, sorry, of the, of the objects, and, and they generated 3D models, and for that purpose we used only the structure from motion. And later on, the post-processing was done in 3D Studio Max, also very common software. And but the basic data, the, the the ground was done by the method what you learned in the past few days. And of course, uh, what is needed? Lot of ambition, <laughs> without ambitions and interest, and sometimes to be brave in uh, crisis situations, in the war or or or. Uh, directly after the earthquake, but don't uh, risk your life, please. <laughs> it was, I was, I am also saying it for our students, if we go to Egypt or to Syria, and uh, really we do our best to prepare everything, and, and, uh, and until now we had, I guess for sure, more than 200 students in these two uh, very dangerous countries, but everyone survived, and no one had any, any uh, illness or, or, or anything, but for sure, take care always. And, uh, and the life is not, not comparable with any, any heritage. Of course, that was also mentioned many times, uh, you need a IT staff, which is good enough, but not the best is required. Because during the course, you don't have the best. You had 30 different laptops and uh, uh, from age of 10 years to one year and uh, d very different cameras and, uh, and this kind of thing. But as you can see at the end of the presentation, you were successful with this, with this kind of stuff. But of course you can be much more clever and fast and smart if you would have a better one. But you don't have to aim the best one, the, the last uh, compute last Mac computers. We Benny checked yesterday. The last one is maybe ten thousand dollar. You don't need it for sure. And of course, you have to be familiar with the technology. I hope you are now familiar with the technology and many experiences. Also, you you uh, you have this this kind of own experience. Uh, yesterday, as I saw, everyone was more happy than three days ago or five days ago. Uh, you, you, you got the first complete models. You were able to, you were able, uh, to make your presentation for, for today. 
And, uh, and I, I think this is, there are no secrets. You need a lot of experiences, you, you need a lot of mistakes, you have to make a lot of mistakes and, and a, lot of, a lot of successes. And this is the secret, how to work cost-effective and time-consuming, because these factors are coming really only after, after having many, many, many experiences. And don't forget, that was also several times mentioned by us, there is no miracle in any, in any kind of technology. And uh, sometimes, or maybe many times, the hybrid solutions are, are really good. And, uh, and as you experience for, for building skin, let's say, or for large interiors, like for, for, uh, for, for big churches, like the, some, some, like the Loreto Basilica, what we also digitized, uh, four years ago, almost four years ago, using the drone, because the interior of the church is, is huge. But you experienced here that uh, based on a 20 minutes flight and few hundred pictures done by the drone, the whole castle was in a given accuracy, of course, digitized, and it was a great, uh, great success, having GPS data and anything else. For interiors, any kind of camera photos are, are, are good enough. But don't forget the manuals, the sketches, they are really, really useful. Not just, uh, in some cases, uh, measuring the markers and what Benny teach you, it's enough. But for, uh, for an architectural survey and uh, for, um, for an archeological documentation, Benny was also mentioning this, uh, Simple sketches having the having the really the basic data, the width and the length of the section or the room, those are really really useful. And uh, and uh, no, there is no any technology who can who can do that instead of instead of you. And if you have a total station, if you have a geodesy or or someone somebody made a geodesy on the site previously, that is everything is really nice, or if it is available. And we touched very shortly the, some of the future technologies, like the, like the LiDAR in the phones, currently only in the iPhone, but, but I, I am sure that uh, in, in few years all of the phones will have this kind of technology. But as I also pointed out, uh, I am also a little bit, uh, uh, I am not really satisfied yet with, with, this, with this technology. Because uh, because the results are are currently not really not really not really good enough, and uh, as this small promo video shows you, the, the technology wasn't wasn't designed for our purposes. Just we are using it because it is very very easy. How the how the laser laser scanner it is a is a very small laser scanner within the phone, and what we had, what I also presented to you. Uh, what we had uh, as first experiences, for example, in this huge tomb complex in, in, in Egypt, within a uh, few hours or, 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 or within a half day, and we have the sh shape of it, we have, a, we have a, a, uh, an almost accurate model of it, and uh, it, is not, it is not comparable with any traditional technology, even with the laser scanner, because the space is so narrow, the laser scanner cannot be used here. And uh, traditional technology, or this, or this smart one, or in the close future, hopefully, the small LiDAR scanner, the small laser scanners, uh, if they will be available and cost-effective, of course, then it can uh, really give us a new, uh, a new opportunity. And now I give the control to Benny. The stage is yours, and he will continue the presentation and, and summarize and conclude the results of this workshop. Thank you for your attention. Okay. So related to the technology and data capture uh, that we used uh, during uh, the course, we focused on the structure from motion uh, algorithm and uh, our main tools were cameras. 
we had a, for that, to, t to record the pictures, to, to take them, that was always the first step of the data capture. And uh, we had a wide range of cell phones, starting from older models of iPhone, from iPhone 8 to the newest 14 Pro, uh, a really wide variety, even some of some, in some cases, Android devices. And it's, they still worked. You had successful results with, with all types of uh, mobile devices. Also for some uh, more advanced, more detailed uh, models, we use some of the DSLR uh, cameras and another type of camera that, that can be added to this range is the, 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 the remotely piloted aircraft systems or the drones uh, that we, we checked and we had some discussions and uh, uh, um, tutorials about how to apply this technology for a better uh, coverage of the object or areas that we want to document. All of you had different laptops, as Joel said, with different computing capacities, but it didn't stop any of you. Some of you had to wait much longer, but you still had nice results, which I will present at the end of this uh, lecture. Uh, and the main software that we use for Structure for Motion was uh, Agisoft MetaShape Professional and the 2.0 version, the newest one currently. We did all of our results uh, with the 3D photogrammetry with these types of devices. What was the workflow uh, that during this course we, we covered is that uh, for a general SFM workflow, like how to prepare uh, the, 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 the 3D model reconstruction, how to, how to prepare for getting the data, acquiring it. We had many, many steps that we uh, continuously repeated to have a, a thorough understanding of this process. The first one was always what to consider before taking the photos uh, and, and, and how to prepare the survey itself. Um, also, for that, what were the appropriate tools, the cameras, phones, drone, maybe uh, different devices, uh, how to, to, to choose it to be uh, fast, accurate, cover everything that you need and be productive. When, when you had made these uh, specific decisions, then it was that uh, we had to have some sort of plan for the work. What are the areas of a, a certain uh, place or an object that we have to cover? What should be the overlap? between the images, uh, both horizontal and vertical uh, axes, how to, how to achieve that and how to not have too many pictures when, and, and how to not have uh, way, way, way uh, less pictures than that are actually required. We had many examples throughout uh, trial and error here of uh, you could experience what was that specific amount that each and every one of you could uh, take to have successful results. Also, when we had the field work, let's say, took the pictures, and then what to do with them, how to process the recorded data. We, uh, in every case, created uh, point clouds. We aligned the pictures, we checked all the different settings. In what case, uh, for drone images, if we have objects from far, what are the settings? When the object is very close, what should you, you change, and if, if the images are not aligned, you don't have any point cloud or you have missing parts, what you, should you change in it? We made dense point clouds for, uh, also for uh, export reasons to other software. Uh, we made uh, meshes, solid models, uh, we textured them, and uh, so we could generate the 3D models of we originally wanted to serve it. But then again, we had to do something that they are measurable, that they are uh, more than just nice models. They could provide important data to get information out of them. It's, uh, it was the, the reference part of the course when we had to learn how to use the GPS. For example, the drone images had them uh, in the EXIF data, how to use them, how to disable them, how to use markers, scale bars, rotate the object, uh, and export them with local coordinate system or instead of the, uh, the, the WGS84 coordinate systems. 
of course, when we were successful with one model, we went to the next step, how to combine two models. And we had two uh, <coughs> very uh, good examples for it. We covered a large area. We modeled the Castillo here. But for that, the details were not that sharp. It was a general model. And we chose uh, one area, which we took pictures of by hand to have a very detailed area. And then we combined the two, how to have uh, areas uh, which are the smart features on it, let's say, are only sharp or, or, or you only make detailed models of the things you want and not every single uh, place, every single object in the, in the area, which would need an incredible amount of uh, pictures, work, and post-processing and computing power also, both human and, and machine. So uh, besides this, we learned how to clean and merge and, and append the different models, retexture them to have a consistent uh, texture in the final model, uh, which part of them we should scale uh, and uh, how that we have a, a, a measurable uh, and referenced final data. And of course, when we did all these, we were finished within Metashape. We checked how to export them to AutoCAD through uh, uh, recap the, the, the dense point clouds, how to uh, display them in AutoCAD to, in order to be uh, able to uh, draw directly using the point cloud as an auxiliary uh, object. So 3ds Max and Blender also how to rotate the different uh, the axes and uh, what you should do to uh, take it out or export it from the, the software and use it in, in a third-party software. Of course, from my point of view, this was most of the time what I saw. All of you, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> paying attention, making notes, and uh, when we reached to a certain level of your knowledge, then you could start applying this on the field as taking pictures for a very, very detailed, and, and, and this is a good video to illustrate that the message got through. You got it, because you didn't commit those errors which are frequent, you stop for every image. And, uh, and, and then this is how we started, by simple images taken, and then uh, to illustrate that we had very good examples which, uh, which were just super thoroughly planned and, and not too many pictures were taken, but the pictures that were taken were the ones that the software needed to have nice results also. And see that as a reminder how the pictures should be taken uh, using uh, the, the, the many tricks and smart solutions that we, we covered throughout this, uh, this course. And we had of course, uh, a more professional camera, not just using any phone, uh, DLSLR versions of the same objects, which had different accuracies and different mo uh, uh, results, we could, we could check and practice both. Yes, when the fieldwork finished, that's when we had the, gr the great silence and uh, the brainstorming, the internal brainstorming, because then that, that's when the knowledge and the, the, the lectures that we had here had to be applied in practice. And uh, all of you were successful with the, the creating the 3D models. So that, that's so that at uh, some cases I could uh, display your models instead of mine to follow the different steps of the course. Of course, when we reached some points and maybe it was uh, we, we, we could close one logical part of this, this whole process. We had some uh, extra lectures showing you different uses. For example, uh, when we were that advanced that we could finish the models. So again, why they were useful, how they should be applied, and some fresh ideas uh, which were applied uh, in real life could be, uh, Jot gave us uh, many, many, many important uh, points in his lecture. But then again, the usual stuff in the processing looked like this, the, the average days besides uh, paying attention to the lectures. And 
Through that, we reached to some of the examples that we did throughout the scope of the course. I highlighted six main uh, case studies that we did. In the Castillo Tower, we checked the example of a handheld freestanding and accessible area uh, which w where we made the general model of the tower and we selected individual parts from the eight statues. Everybody chose one or two statues which you made closer images to have that parts of the point cloud more, much more detailed. We also checked, that was the first model that we created. And then we went to a more advanced part. We checked the, the, the dining room and the lecture room to have the examples of harsh light conditions and extreme contrast with extremely detailed interiors. It was, it was a, a very strong beginning, a very hard task to check what are the limitations of taking pictures inside with high contrast, with uh, limited space for movements, and when the different objects uh, are in front of you, covered, did they cover the view that you think you have recorded, and why, what was the mistake, and how, what you should do to avoid that, or when you repeat the whole process, what to pay attention to. We had these nice case studies. And then when you had, uh, when, when you learned from this mistake, we, we, we went to the second most difficult part, the Castillo Tower. When you had to apply the interior images, how to apply them with the exterior ones. And uh, uh, it was, it was a, a difficult one, but we had successes in uh, modeling the staircase also and, and some alignments of the external parts with the interior. The, 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 I think the most spectacular results come from the, the Castillo de Chapultepec model, which was based on uh, remotely pirated aircraft photographs uh, and covered the entire Castillo. That one was good to check the referencing with GPS and, uh, and based on them how to scale it, how to create the digital elevation model, ortho mosaic satellite and map based maps, how they can be used uh, to to show its, its geographic position, the entire 3D model or just sections or, or top, of top views. And then we use this to check uh, third party software such as Autodesk's AutoCAD for dense uh, point cloud export via um, reality capture. And then when we had the basic model, we checked the individual, individual parts, which was in this case the Amphitheatro, the Castillo de Chapultepec. And this was a freestanding part, which you could use either your phone or your or camera to have, in order to be able to put into the uh, previous uh, general model. And also, when you were, you had enough practice and you were confident enough to apply your knowledge on the field, we had, uh, for each and every one of you, individual practices. Some of you repeated the same, you had uh, two or three people doing the same object, but also some of you chose their own interest and own type of uh, object, to, o object or area to model. Uh, we had also here objects or interior areas, staircases or other objects. We had to use the capture views and then how to bring them to AutoCAD. There, this is, uh, the summary, one of, from one of these examples, the case um, where we had the uh, remotely piloted aircraft systems images to reconstruct the, chap uh, the Castillo de Chapultepec. This was the, point, the, 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 the first point cloud when we reached. We had to clean, we had to optimize this model to, in order to run uh, on, on, on weaker laptops and also so that everybody could finish and have the, s the same res results, the process, the same uh, images in order to get such 3D models. So uh, this is the wireframe version of the model and we applied the texturing process for the entire area. This is the example as a reminder that we also made after this, which is not in the general workflow anymore to have dense point clouds 
but we checked if there is a need to combine it maybe with uh, laser scanned data uh, or other po LIDAR or other point clouds. How can you generate that data? How can you filter it based on point confidence? How can you make a, a cleaned uh, version of, the, of, of, of such point cloud and bring it and combine to other software in order to further uh, proce processing? So these were the places of the images. And then when we were successful with georeferencing, we used the, the drone coordinates for that. We could display the map under it, both satellite and normal map. And then our model at the end became scaled and oriented and to the north, we had all the coordinate systems corrected and ready to use. This was of the same models, a smaller part, but some of you tried to have detailed, more detailed version, use higher resolutions to have um, uh, a specific area, in this case, the, this courtyard and the, the tower to have uh, a detailed 3D model, also finishing by the, by the, by the texturing. And I'm very happy to have an extra object we got from Paula that she took uh, on uh, her own for uh, up, uh, applying this knowledge uh, and we could process them to have the, the, this result, the solid model and the object. This was the, the last step of the course when we, could, we were uh, confident enough to create separate models and how to combine them and how to delete the unnecessary parts and how to make these two parts kind of se uh, as seamless as possible in these uh, examples and also scale to measure on these things. And this knowledge uh, had really nice results and here I want to highlight the, the result of, of, of all of you for every person has one, one, one slide and to, 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 to show some of the nice parts or some of the, the, the results that uh, we are most proud of and you are most proud of your own successes. Here, for example, Ivan's results are very good to illustrate different scales. This is the, uh, that, that, that model that we combined with the generic 3D model of the Castillo. Together, so, so this, was, th th this gave much more detailed uh, views of the stairs and all the, all, all the, the details in within this given area. And also, uh, this on, a, on a much different uh, scale, such as an object using this, this knowledge, it could be quickly applied to document in 3D such a uh, statue. We have uh, also a different scale, the, the tower for Paula, uh, which was uh, very thoroughly modeled. And here you can see some of her successes with the interior of and the different ver versions of the model of uh, the second model, which was, I think, the most difficult because of the, the lack of light, the height contrast, and uh, the abundance of details in the area. As for Paula, we have uh, also a second uh, project that she chose on her own to have how to how to be quick with documenting uh, archaeological objects, and we could check that on the last day. Uh, of, uh, and based on this, we learned how to align the different parts. We have some more examples on a much different scale, which were chosen. But this is the knowledge applied outside the classroom, outside this course. Uh, on this. For Laura, we have also very nice uh, results, which are object scaled uh, results. And Gloria chose three different um, scales uh, that in with, within within this area that she chose outside to model and uh, how she approached it 
And so we have nice results from Leonardo uh, for small and medium scale uh, 3D modeling also. Um, Umberto chose a larger scale, which uh, we are very proud of that how this could be applied on a, on a facade level, how the, the, the images can be processed or first taken and then processed in order to provide uh, the necessary material for archaeological dra uh, architectural drawings and for CAD post-processing. Uh, and we can see the successes here of, of all the main steps, the digital elevation model, the ortho mosaic, then uh, exported to point clouds, the scaled image for, uh, for evaluating and, and creating the interpreted drawings. For Umberto, also, we have very, very nice results of, a, of an object scale uh, put together with, a, with an archaeological object. And these markers that we checked throughout the course, how to use them to, to properly scale and measure and make, make it measure uh, an object applied uh, with many points on the actual model on to the two sides based on what it could be just as Paula's model uh, uh, aligned and used as a scaled one free free floating uh, object. And we have the same, uh, because we many, we many people chose the same areas and we have very nice results. Some of you used medium, low, high, super high resolutions with different speeds and of course they were because of the different computing capacities that we had and you had. But all of you succeeded to take your own set of photos with your own device, for camera, DSLR camera, anything, uh, and then to, to have your own results with your own computer and your own, own approach. So that's why you can see the same, uh, same objects but with different, uh, slightly different results. And also uh, for Christina we have this object, the same knowledge that we, at the end of the course, the accumulated 3D modeling uh, processes on the ri right hand corner showing the actual scaled and aligned object as a, as a, an, an, as, 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 as a simple animation. For Carlos, uh, also, uh, was an interesting part of the of the Castillo. Um, we can see some of the the smaller scaled application here. Besides, I think uh, <coughs> Juan Gerardo chose different, really different scales here. Um, the Tlalte, Tlalte. So excuse me for my bad pronunciation, but Tlalte Kutli. <laughs> <laughs> for the Museo de Templar Mayor and also uh, we have the same results of the tower successfully measured and evaluated and a simple ad, uh, animation from the processed model. Of the, of, of, of you can see the details of uh, the final textured uh, 3D model of made in uh, Agis of Marashev professional. We had many versions of the uh, of the same tower, but this this the, this one I want to highlight because it's uh, it's a small area showed in in really high detail with just a few or not just a few, just the right amount of pictures taken by Guillermo. Uh, and uh, we, th this, this is a good illustration, Guillermo, that we have the textured model here and the, the confidence in the middle and then the actual geometry behind the colors, behind the, the texture. So it's, it can really be applied for further studies or drawings or uh, evaluation just by using simple tools such as phones and a few hours of, com of computing. So another example of, of a, a slightly larger scale from Guillermo, we have the, 
the this uh, circle of base and the, the statues here. For Maricela, the nice results can be seen both on the remotely piloted aircraft system images, the tower itself, and then uh, the choice of her own uh, for the Chapulin area. <laughs> yeah, the Chapulin Basin. <laughs> Very nice results of both the, s the, 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 the actual geometry and the textures themselves are, are good. And in this one, I just want to highlight that you did well, Maricela, but you deleted, you didn't leave uh, unnecessary blue points. You, you, you spent, you applied the cleaning process and the, the optimization that we, we checked many times. And uh, with the help of everyone uh, and the, the uh, escritor of, of Maricello, we could, I, I, I would like to highlight that we did a very important part in, not just, we didn't just make notes and use the knowledge that will later on be forgotten or some of the steps might be forgotten because there were very spe specific settings, what numbers to use, where to click. And uh, with the help of everyone and the keyboard of Maricela and, <laughs> and the supervision, <laughs> uh, we could make notes in Spanish to summarize after every major step, step by step, uh, what to do in order to have results. When we have just one object, or when we have an entire area to you, how, what settings and what to pay attention to when using the drone, or how to combine these models, how to explore them, how to clean, how to do all the steps. So we have a very useful manual for this course that you can use as a reference in your further uh, investigations and uh, field works. Yes, this is for Maricela, the, the, the <laughs> applause for <laughs> And to all of you, because we, you chipped in with your ideas, so it's, 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 a, it's a teamwork. <laughs> we have some also uh, very nice results from Maricela, because this was, we, we, everyone one, uh, had the chance to document with your phone or with other uh, cameras, these uh, called uh, some of our, the early version, <laughs> The samovar, yeah, and uh, we have the detailed version of the the object itself, and uh, you can, if you if you pay attention and you, you you're careful with the lights and how you take the photos and where the focus should be, you can even make very thin lines and very fine details in 3D, just based on what we learned here. Um, for Erika, we have also a nice uh, overview of, of the many thing, uh, things she did. So she chose, besides processing the entire, uh, the, the, the Castillo, she chose the place we called Amphitheatro, and then the area of the, this tower also, to process them, and to combine them uh, within one model can see some other examples, the, for example, the, 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 the lion statue, the point cloud, and the different versions of the 3D data that we, we have. Uh, very, very nice uh, results in the, the two merged models. And from Ajax also, super nice uh, details of the, the amphitheatro statues of itself and all the major steps that were uh, required Fra from Angel, Tambien. We have <laughs> we have the ne the, the really uh, spectacular results for both object scale and then the cleaned version of the the statue in the wireframe view. So we they everyone got the idea. They and, and it's not just important you understood it and you made your own notes. You are able now to apply it and to start the work, start your own work. For example, Dr. Sanchez <laughs> can immediately <laughs> advance with, <laughs> yes, <laughs> such as here we can see with, for, with the example. And it's, it's super important because you chose a slightly different method than other people. You 
chose to use on your own higher resolution but uh, less uh, number of pictures. And normally this would be more difficult because for that amount of pictures have really, they need to be good. Because if you have less pictures, you have more room for error. But you did it, well, just 17 images, if I remember correctly here, and you could achieve it. So it was, besides the classroom, it's a little pioneering, <laughs> experimenting, well, how not to use what we said and still be successful. So it's, <laughs> it's good. Also, we have uh, results of the, uh, the object, the sum of our inner or the, the, the puring part, yes, of it such as uh, the same object we have for Oscar, also nice uh, results with aligned views and uh, other individual models, uh, all, all of them which were required. And Emmanuel also did very uh, good processing. Here, however, which we were really proud of is that this was outside in, in uh, direct sunlight situation with when you had the contrast of the light and the shadow uh, magnified or more than in with, in with interior parts, when you have a diffused light uh, cover covering your objects usually. But for the chapulins, sorry, I don't know this, this uh, antern Antenna. antennas, yes, <laughs> are still, they are fine. And, and the important is that this is outside uh, with with um, not the perfect light conditions and still the entire basin here is modeled, the chapulin with these uh, antennas as well. And it was an, an individual project. Emmanuel chose it. Uh, for Luis, we have also uh, the architect approach <laughs> and <laughs> the different uh, 3D models here. Yeah. For Maite also. Uh, very nice roof for the interior. This was a challenge for most of you. Uh, it was a challenge to everybody. But uh, many of you could overcome it and have spectacular results for the dining uh, room. This is the, the roof. It's within those let's say, very limited uh, photographic conditions. And you could see the consistent roof quality with the texture itself. Uh, so, and this was in the beginning when we had the least uh, practice, especially that is super uh, uh, good. Also some other results uh, for the same areas as others also have done. And for NIDA, we had also the, the, the architect approach and then many uh, different views, which I think is, is good to illustrate on this slide is that we weren't only able to make the, the, the 3D models, like what to do with them. We made specific views, facade views, that we took to AutoCAD or, or other drawing software. And this one is already the, the third day's model, but set for uh, further works to, to be used. And Fabian was, chose uh, an interesting thing because we, uh, for, the, for the end of the course, we gave you simple parts to, to re revisit, to finalize all the things. But Fabian chose a super difficult part <laughs> on his own, <laughs> where which we, he had a lot of success in it. Was he took, I, 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 I was expecting maybe 50 images, 60 images, for, because it would be quick to revise all the steps that we covered in the, the previous days. But it was more than 700. And uh, in, in, in difficult light uh, scenario and, and conditions, but you can see the su his success. Uh, with it's, a, it's a different approach to, to cover the lower parts. Cover the lower parts of the stairs, the upper part, the rails, the entire space. Yeah. Hmm? Okay. 
So he would like to, Jot would like to, to add some comments on this. Uh, and ju just, just one more yeah. thing. Uh, <laughs> so I don't want to, 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 to take it. Fabian deleted these parts, the walls. It, they were also, you can see them on the point cloud, that the entire space is that, that's it. His success is not limited to the stairs also, it's extended to the entire space. <laughs> so good work for everyone. I'm very proud of the success that you could all achieve. Yeah. For you. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, I, just want, I just wanted to highlight one one new expression what came up, the great silence, that uh, we have to add to the workflow. After or during aligning the photos while creating the model, really the great silence is coming. That was, uh, that was also detected by us. It was a nice, uh, nice condition of the, of the workshop. But now I think uh, uh, it's also time to, time to say from our side, uh, Thank many thanks to you. I really, I really uh, thank to Valeria, her continuous support and trust, and hosting us since five years, almost almost five years when we came up for the first time in November of 2017. And uh, and a very special thanks goes to Juana Badillo Gomez. She was with us on most of the field walkings and, and surveys and she, she never give up in every kind of meaning. And also a special thanks to our guest today, to Salvador Avilar. He was also with us on many, many field trips and, uh, and we had uh, really memorable conversations about architectural, structural, engineering and uh, critics on restoration and, and that was really, really very nice. And I have to say thanks to, to our embassy yet, to Gabor Andrényi and our ambassador Zoltán Német. And I also not forgot the good moments and the support of our previous ambassador, Ivan Medvedsky. He was the first one who started to, to support this project. But during this workshop, uh, one of our main supporters was Dr. Sanchez, Maria Sanchez, Vega. <laughs> and a special, really special thanks goes to you. And at last but not least to the team, to all of you who are, one, some of you are here, but uh, half of the team at home. If you want, I can repeat your names, but uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe I know everyone still. And, uh, but you have to know, it was, uh, it was also a, an adventure for us. We never did it before. We also, of course, a special thanks goes to our universities because they are, they are behind us. They are uh, financing and supporting, partly supporting uh, our, our projects everywhere. And, uh, and uh, but this kind of intensive course was never made, never made before. Uh, we don't had this crisis situation or we don't have in Europe these dense uh, situations uh, what after an earth earthquake is coming, we don't have it and uh, we are doing, on, we are doing our, our, our field trips and, and, uh, and expeditions, let's say, on your own. There are, of course, crisis situations but, uh, but not, in, uh, not in the density what you, what you have. And of course, uh, uh, as far as I know, uh, at two o'clock there will be speeches from authorities. And uh, but uh, also, I have to say thank many thanks to to our Hungary Helps program, which is really, really something supporting very unique cases. Also, also this case, the the, uh, the re re restoration of uh, of. Uh, parts of Teposlan, discourse, and uh, and a lot of other things uh, was supported by this program, and this program has uh, also a lot of a uh, lot of other activities in northern Iraq or Syria, Lebanon also, uh, and uh, and thousands of uh, thousands of students f 
from a crisis, let's say, crisis country are currently studying in Hungary, maybe more than 10,000, 20,000, sorry, is really a big, a big number. And, uh, you know, it is a good, good opportunity also for us to have, to, to know, to know each other, to, to learn a uh, lot of, lot of new things. And um, we also learn from you a lot of things. And, uh, and uh, we hope and really thank you for some comments on the, on the, on the slides. Yeah, we, we really hope that, that you learned from, um, from us something relevant. And now, the last slide. <laughs> Thank you for your attention. Muchísimas gracias. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, both of you. Of course, for this last lecture, but for all these 10 days, all your patience, <laughs> your knowledge, and, and your good humor also. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think these 10 days were a great experience for, for all of you, all the participants, and for us also. So really, we're very grateful very, very grateful. And let me say congratulations to you all. I mean, the results are amazing. I'm really happy uh, that, that this workshop could be um, a reality. And seeing these results, I, I really, really am very um, grateful to you all. And really, really congratulations. We have time. I mean, we have like half an hour before the speeches, <laughs> before our authorities um, come. So I don't know if any one of you have to say something or ask something. Uh, there is a question or a... Uh, maybe we can... The Te pasamos el micrófono, según si es que logró. Ya mire, ya me voltearon. We want to show our gratitude to our teachers, to Salt and, and Benny. We are very, very thankful to you both. We had uh, a good time. We learned a lot from you. And... Uh, we had hard times, uh, mistakes, but we also had joy and, and fun, good humor, yeah. the results. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Nadia Mas, anyone else? Yes, there is. Uh, no, ah, sí. Oscar, please. The, the comment is the same. I'm happy, I'm glad to be here and, and learn a lot of you. It's, it's amazing, it's an amazing course. Uh, I would like that your knowledge could be uh, expanded in the academic uh, school from the INA. It's it's a good experience. All the, all the, uh, all the academic team can be practice this. It's amazing. Thank you. Bueno, pues muchas gracias. I, I saw some of the, of the comments in the slides. There were, I mean. I had to read them fast. I don't know if you want like to go through some of these <laughs> comments. <laughs> Just some of them. And the word I was looking for was proud. I'm really proud of you.
Microsoft already has the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then I will take it. So, Ivan wrote that uh, great experience where I learned a lot of tricks using technology <laughs> to survey architecture or archaeology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the dirty tricks. Dirty yes. tricks. <laughs> Maybe the most important thing is to know the objective of the survey so you can plan and take care of the details of the process. It's not the equipment, but the technique and the way to approach the obje object that make the difference. Very important and very serious comment, and it is true. <laughs> With no doubt, all this knowledge shared by the professors will make a huge difference in the daily tasks to manage and preserve our heritage. I really hope so. And I think I speak in both yeah, of yeah. them. <laughs> of course. Pa Paola is mine. <laughs> I learned that this type of process requires patience and care. Patience coming up, always. <laughs> patience and care, observation and scanning in the details from the particular to the general. Everything is important depending on the purpose. Yeah, that is also very important. I also highlighted on some of the slides. I learned that is that it is good to ask for help from specialists who with their experience contribute to improve <laughs> the work you do. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate the opportunity to have participated in this course. I have learned a lot from my classmates and teachers. No, now I can't stop planning all that I am going to do with these tools <laughs> and all that I have to practice. As, as, far, as far as I know, this is a, this is a facade, uh, and Paula did it immediately uh, when she went back, and, and she has also chosen this, uh, this interesting vessel. <laughs> Gloria is yours. Oh, I got the long, long text. <laughs> <laughs> so it's here. As long as I got this workshop knowing nothing about the topic, I'm really impressed about how helpful this can be even when my laptop didn't cooperate so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I consider this have been uh, a good starting point. Uh, it, it has, yes. During the time I was practicing the Canyon model, I had a chance to think about the process, the steps taken and the mistakes done, which surely I'll solve during the these days. Thanks, Joel and Benny, for sharing your knowledge, your patience, and your time and information shared during this workshop. It's, our, it's been our pleasure so to all of you. Leonardo is mine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I think the possibility of knowing and learning about the technologies for the survey of spaces and objects, the programs and techniques seen in the course will allow our surveys and records to be faster and more accurate. Yeah, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> that was the aim. <laughs> Umberto was well experienced. You, you saw him. And Umberto is yours. Yes. So this course allowed me in a practical way to understand how to optimize this technological tool together with the traditional tools with uh, which we work every day to preserve cultural heritage. So he says, thanks to the teachers and sharing the knowledge, we were very happy to do so and maybe we could add some extra things to, to widen your uh, experience and knowledge too have better results in the future, such as we can already see the improvement here in such an object. So it works. <laughs> Christina is mine. I feel very grateful to have participated in this course where I have learned new techniques from registering different types of heritage and knowing the range of possibilities that we have in its application. I would love to learn more and above all, but put it into practice in my daily work whenever possible. Hmm? Depends on her. <laughs> <laughs> Spanish. Spanish. 
Spanish one, I will try. Uh, sorry if I make some mistakes on your beautiful language, but I will, I will <laughs> try to my best, struggle a bit. <laughs> Me interesó mucho los modelos reconstructivos y de multimedia para museos. Asimismo, las intervenciones en monumentos arqueológicos e históricos para su presentación pública. Thank you very much for sharing your experience and knowledge and thanks to the National Coordination and Historical Monuments for the great opportunity. Uh, Spanish again. Uh, it's multilingual, so. <laughs> but I will try. I will struggle a bit because I like your language a lot, so. <laughs> Tres pasos básicos para generar modelos tridimensionales. Una parte fundamental es el buen manejo de la técnica fotográfica y tener claro el o los objetivos para obtener resultados óptimos en los pro proyectos a realizar. Definitivamente hay que continuar aprendiendo y practicar. Uh, no more text, no more text, it's the same. <laughs> So yeah, <laughs> definitely, yes. <laughs> we have Marisela. Marisela. You want to read your own? <laughs> <laughs> I learned how to manage three-dimensional three models in different scales, from sites to buildings to small size objects, and I found very useful to be able to keep track on the reference of all these objects in space. I usually cap these models as individual objects, and now I think it's really important to treat them as a whole. Okay. You were also not a beginner. <laughs> I also learned new strategies to digitalize objects with complicated shapes and materials. We hope so. <laughs> For sure mm. you have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ajax. Ajax is. For me, yeah. It is exciting to have at our disposal such a useful tool as photogrammetry. Each step of the workflow requires effort and dedication, but the results allow us to get closer to the knowledge of Mexico's cultural heritage and contribute to its conservation. Oh, well said, yes. It is. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you, Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure. <laughs> there are questions, too. Oh. Oscar, in this course I learned, okay, let's start here, build models in historical architectural heritage to match different kind of models in order to generate a new model more complicated, to save time in order to pick up the data used in the process, to use no especially special equipment, just camera, drone, and the computer to process the image and build the dots cloud, point cloud. Find the software easy to use, the comments and export in other, in other drawing software. In my point of view, missed practice. How to export Metaship files in order, in other kinds of 3D print software or equipment. 3D printer, you mean? Directly the meta shape to 3D printer. Just press Control P. <laughs> 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 and 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 wait during a great silence with big patience. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It was a great experience, but beside this question, it was a great experience to have learned from you in this method of registering architectural heritage. I hope to take other update workshop with you. Well, we hope so. Yes. Uh, just to answer your question or give you a general idea that usually people uh, simplify these models because, you know, on the, these detailed models we have, there are many, many extra parts which would otherwise be printed with a 3D printer also. Everything you see in the model will be printed and you need to simplify it. 
So for that, you need to remodel parts or really uh, you will see that in Metashape, in tools, you will have mesh editing options. You will have to explore them, how to make a, a, a simpler, more precise, more sharp mesh. And then you will need to, I think, usually either to in Blender, 3ds Max, or other 3D modeling and editing software, you can uh, finalize it, maybe model something which it will be standing on, not just you know on its own. You have to to find the, the ways how your specific 3D printer will work. And then, uh, usually the STL format is suitable, or maybe yours printer will use its specific format and it will have its own software. But you will find that this, the, the, the file formats in Metashape that work, they speak the same language, they will work. You will have to bring uh, a model as clean and sharp from Metashape itself to other software as possible. But Joel's office printed a lot of things. Oh, not really. Uh, <laughs> Let me let me uh, let me allow to say some uh, some critical view on it, because uh, because uh, the first 3D printer what I saw uh, it was in the 90s maybe 94 or 95 uh, the first generation 3D printer worked with a gypsum power and some glue and and uh, and that was really really amazing and. Uh, and but so maybe ten since ten years we have this uh, customized three D printers for for everyone, but mainly for architectural architectural offices. We have also two two different in our in our studio, and uh, and very honestly, um, I didn't understood, and that's why we bought three D printers. We didn't understood why the three D prints are so so expensive. The printer, okay, that is once you have to pay five thousand dollar or something like that for a better one, maybe ten thousand. Okay, this is an investigation. But if I count with the success, if we could have always beautiful models for a presentation or for some museum exhibitions, and and we can and we can we can ask for um, for 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 money instead of the model. And, uh, but I didn't understood uh, why is it so expensive because the filament, the material is really cheap. One, one, one package is no more than $10 or something like that. The, the tool is expensive, the material is very cheap, and how, how is it? And uh, after really weeks and months to be unsuccessful, uh, I understood because, uh, because that is a kind of, from my point of view, that is a kind of kind of a promise maybe for the future but but until now you have to work a lot on the model editing the model if there is a little hole and there are softwares so kind of supporting softwares to to uh, to, to to make to make the the printable printable 3d suitable for the printer but that is a huge work and it takes really too much time, and uh, and very honestly, if we are we are using our own 3D printers, if we have <coughs> some students or practicants in the studio, and I, I cannot give them any any other work. Okay, let's uh, let's have a game, and I have this idea. Let's have, let's have a print, start to learn it, because uh, if it is needed, and we are we are in an urgent case, and. Uh, that is midnight, and at eight o'clock we have the presentation, and and uh, most of the renders are not ready. And let's let's start a 3D, let's start a printed model too. For sure, it is not working, and the error messages are coming. Uh, but maybe we are we are we are wrong with the with the method. But but that is the same what I heard also from others. It's good to have a 3D printer. Sometimes it's working, sometimes not. But for 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 professional cases. Or, or better to say for emergency case, if we have a deadline, and uh, that is, uh, it is better to, to ask for a printed model from a professional. It's really complicated, I, I, I really don't know why. Some, but, but the secret is, I, I, I guess, is uh, the editing software. And from my point of view, they are not, not well developed. 
but maybe not, that is not the aim of the producer to make <coughs> better developed, developed softwares. I don't know. For, for Emmanuel's comment, uh, the SFM technique and the Agisoft uh, software were something new for me. I think that this technique has a lot of potential and uh, multiple applications in conservation projects. I'm glad I had the opportunity to take this course. Yeah, with really nice <laughs> results. We are also glad that you took it. With the two antennas. Yeah, the two antennas are impressive on the Chapulin. Luis Fernando. Hmm? Ah, you are hiding. <laughs> As an architect, the processes learned in this course are very useful for recording deterioration in three dimensions. Those are tools we can use as students. You are not a student anymore. <laughs> or in professional life, it's better. Having an easier way to obtain data from buildings we miss in a first look. Compatibility with other architectural drafting software saves us time and generates plans for with more accurate building data. Yeah, that's right. Hmm. My turn. It's, uh, it's very small, I will try to. <laughs> As a restorer, for me, it's very important to know how to build 3D models in order to register constituent elements manufacturing techniques, deterioration, and intervention processes carried out on cultural heritage. This course was a great opportunity for my professional development. I was able to acquire the basic knowledge and skills necessary to create accurate, efficient, and quality documentation in diverse scales, from an object to a building to an architectural complex. Ah, it's still my turn. The <laughs> exercises <laughs> from the course <laughs> let me understand the scope and limitations of each uh, of the techniques and equipment. The choice of the survey method lies in the objective of the process and what it is going to be used for. Yes, uh, I'm very grateful to the organizers and the teachers for allowing me to incorporate an efficient survey method in my daily basis. So w we are also very happy that we could uh, teach us something that gets used daily or on a regular basis. And from Nider, these days I realize the usefulness of photogrammetry tools and software for quick surveys and recordings. Also, I consider that the application of these techniques could serve as a complement to traditional methods when there are enough time to apply them. Yeah, that's, that's true. And that was also this, uh, this small fountain. That was, um, as far as I remember, you did also very few number of pictures, but you were, you were successful. Uh, that was a good, good example. No comments from Fabian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I just want to to thank you uh, for this course and I learned a lot of things and I perfected a lot of my techniques that uh, were not so so good still so uh, thank you and thank the the Ina for this uh, course and thank you th thanks a lot oh well <laughs> I want to thanks um, our professors, Sols and Benny, for the patience and the knowledge. Also, our authorities to Valeria to uh, be able to do this, and Juana, who organized, Juana Gomez Vadillo, who organized all the course, and the, and the persons who works in the Coordinación Nacional, who also are super um, helpful to do all these kind of events. And the director of the Museo Nacional de Historia, Salvador Rueda, because he allows us to be in all the museum and to work uh, in the needs of the workshop and the people who works with him too. We, we are here because they allow 
you allowed us to be. Thank you very much. Ah, okay. Thank you. Thank you for your okay, so that was the, the last one. Um, I think we can just wait no, a little bit for our authorities to get here. And we have like a five minute break. Thank you very much. <laughs>
Tengo, ahí está, sí, sí, ya, ya también lo escucho bien. Yo también. Bueno, pues muchísimas eh, gracias por continuar eh, aquí con nosotros. Y bueno, pues con la extraordinaria eh, conferencia que acabamos eh, de escuchar, se concluyen eh, las actividades programadas como parte del curso From Space to Data, Smart Survey Methods in Architecture and Archaeology, eh, curso que como ya hemos dicho en, en, en intervenciones anteriores, pues ha sido auspiciada por el gobierno de Hungría. Y bueno, pues daremos ahora inicio al acto de clausura de este curso y bueno, pues para ello contamos con un espléndido presidium. Eh, nos acompaña el historiador Salvador Rueda Smithers, director del Museo Nacional de Historia y bueno, nuestro muy generoso anfitrión en estos 10 días de curso. Muchísimas gracias, Salvador. Eh, nos acompaña también el arquitecto René Alvarado López, coordinador nacional de Centros INA. Eh, muchísimas gracias, eh, René. Eh, también en representación del director general de Lina, tenemos el gran gusto de contar con el antropólogo José Luis Perea, secretario técnico de esta institución y eh, nos honra eh, con su presencia y a quien pues saludo con, con muchísimo afecto al excelentísimo embajador de Hungría en México, Soltan Nemeth. Muchísimas gracias, señor embajador. Y bueno, pues también eh, nos continúan acompañando eh, nuestros eh, dos especialistas húngaros que han estado a cargo de estos 10 eh, días de curso, eh, Solt Basaros y Mor Berengus Takats. ¿no? Pues este es nuestro gran presidium y este, a quienes pues les agradezco que nos puedan acompañar en este acto. Y bueno, pues daremos eh, la palabra este, al, al historiador Salvador Rueda eh, para que, bueno, pues, eh, pues nos, nos dé, pues, <ríe> perdón. Gracias, Valeria. Buenas tardes a todos. No, no me queda más que agradecer la presencia de todos ustedes, espero que hayan sido eh, jornadas inolvidables, eh, que les haya funcionado bien el espacio para hacer sus ejercicios, que haya sido un incentivo eh, especial para hacer un proyecto intelectual y para pensar a futuro en los proyectos que ustedes tienen y cómo echar a andar lo que aprendieron eh, ustedes aquí. Eh, no me queda más que darles las gracias y decirles que están en su casa. Gracias. Muchísimas gracias, este Salvador, de verdad por, pues, por tu anfitrionía, tal la de tu equipo. Este han sido pues, días espléndidos en donde eh, pues, el, el grupo de participantes pudieron tener acceso a este magnífico inmueble a sus espacios y pues con ello eh, completar eh, las, eh, pues los ejercicios ¿no? y las dinámicas que el, que el taller dictó. Y bueno, pues ahora eh, quisiera eh, dar la palabra al excelentísimo embajador de Hungría en México, el señor Soltan Mehmet. Pues muchas gracias, muy buenas tardes a todos, estimados miembros del presidium, señoras y señores, amigas y amigos. Es realmente, antes de todo, muchas gracias por, por, por invitarme a este evento, ¿no? a la clausura de este curso, que según, bueno, mis, según lo que escuché, era, tenía mucho éxito y fue, y fue muy interesante y realmente… Me, eso realmente me, me llena de, de, de orgullo y de gran satisfacción porque aquí tenemos otro ejemplo de que la cooperación entre los dos países sí funciona muy bien y tiene cosas concretas y va adelante como esto ya empezó. 
los inicios, estamos en es unas fechas muy interesantes, muy importantes. Hace, bueno, casi cuatro años que tuvimos una visita de nuestro canciller aquí a Ciudad de México y él firmó un acuerdo de cooperación con la Secretaría de Cultura sobre el apoyo húngaro a la restauración del patrimonio cultural dañado en México en, en, en los sismos de 2017. Y justamente empezó desde entonces un, 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 un trabajo de restauración con la INA y también de lo, de el, eh, entre, entre ellos en el, en el convento de natividad de Antepostlán, el antiguo convento de natividad y el templo de natividad de Antepostlán. Y, y justamente pasado mañana va a regresar eh, nuestro canciller aquí a México y va a Tepoztlán, donde inaugurará justamente junto con la Secretaría de, de, de Cultura aquellos trabajos que fueron hechos y realizados con el apoyo húngaro. Entonces, estamos en una, unas fechas muy, muy importantes y en el apoyo en que entonces se, se suscribió en 2019 también incluía la asistencia húngara para, entre otros, también organizar este seminario donde es, donde es el que concluye. Y bueno, eso no me falta otra cosa que agradecer la buena cooperación de la, de la parte mexicana, de Lina, de, 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 del museo y de todos que estaban involucrados en este, en este seminario. Muchas gracias a George, que también nos ha eh, ayudado mucho y trabajado muchísimo. Y bueno, nada más, yo pienso que este no es solamente, es solamente uno de los primeros pasos que todavía tenemos adelante en esta cooperación, que repito, que una muestra del éxito, de lo que se puede, de, de, de cooperación exitosa de lo que se puede hacer entre dos países. Muchas gracias otra vez. Gracias. Sí, muchísimas, muchísimas gracias, señor embajador. Y bueno, pues… Daremos ahora la palabra al antropólogo José Luis Perea, secretario técnico de Lina, que viene en representación de nuestro director general. Muy buenas tardes a todas, a todos. Este, muy grato en esta tarde y en esta sala bellísima tener la oportunidad de compartir con el presidium que acompaña a la realización de la clausura de este curso, poder eh, llevarlo a cabo con presencia de, de todos ustedes. Con la honrosa representación del antropólogo Diego Prieto, director general del INA, saludo con mucho gusto y aprecio al señor Sultán Mehmet, embajador de Hungría en México, a la maestra Valeria Valero Pie, coordinadora nacional de monumentos históricos, a mi maestro Salvador Rueda Smith, director del Museo Nacional de Historia, aquí del Castillo de Chapultepec, y a mi querido amigo y compañero, el arquitecto René Alvarado López, coordinador nacional de, de Centro Sina. Nos es muy grato compartir esta mesa con el Doctor Solz Basoros, Basaros, cabeza del Departamento de Arquitectura Explorativa de la Universidad Tecnológica y Economía de Budapest. Muchas gracias por acompañarnos. Y también del maestro Mor Bendegos Takax, del Instituto de Arqueología de la Universidad Católica de Pasmani, Peta. Gracias. Eh, Quisiera pues, eh, retomar el sentido con el que el embajador ya enunciaba la cooperación eh, cultural, el patrimonio que se ha venido gestando con el Instituto Nacional de Antropología e Historia para eh, darle sobre todo importancia al significado, en este caso para Lina, que después de los sismos del 2017, el gobierno de Hungría haya ofrecido al gobierno de México apoyo económico y técnico para contribuir en el resarcimiento de daños causados en el patrimonio cultural. 
este gran gesto de cooperación y solidaridad internacional ha logrado, como ya lo decía el embajador, importantes actividades y frutos. Se firmó el acuerdo de cooperación entre la Secretaría de Cultura del Gobierno Mexicano y el Ministerio de Asuntos Exteriores de Hungría, eh, decía yo, en materia de conservación de patrimonio cultural, el 9 de abril del 2019, como ya bien se expresó. Se llevaron a cabo diversas misiones conformadas por especialistas húngaros a partir del 2017, en asistencias que se tuvieron en febrero, en julio y agosto de 2019 y en diciembre de 2022. En materia de intercambio científico, tecnológico y educativo, expertos de Hungría, de la Universidad de Tecnología y Economía de Budapest, participaron en el segundo simposio internacional organizado junto con la Unión Europea, que se llamó Estrategias de Intervención para Atender el Patrimonio Cultural Afectado por los Sismos de 2017. En este punto se considera oportuno recordar que no fue la primera vez que Hungría brindaba este tipo de apoyo a México. Después de 1985, el arquitecto húngaro Indre Dulaxka participó en la reconstrucción de la Ciudad de México. Al regresar a su país, fundó la sección de comportamiento estructural y sismos en la Universidad de Tecnología y Economía de Budapest. En 2020, se firmaron nuevos acuerdos entre el gobierno de Hungría a través de su embajada en México y el gobierno de México a través de Lina y el Instituto Nacional de Bellas Artes. Acuerdo que permitió una aportación para la restauración del templo y antiguo convento de la Natividad, el Tepoztlán Morelos, y en particular sobre lo que son eh, la barda y la cruz atrial, tres capillas, posa, eh, la capilla abierta y la fachada principal del templo. Estos trabajos se entregarán a la comunidad de Tepoztlán este próximo viernes 20 de enero con la distinguida presencia del ministro de Asuntos Exteriores de Hungría y la Secretaría de Cultura de México, como también ya aquí el embajador nos expresó. Eh, hay también que reconocer y considerar la aportación en forma de asistencia técnica que ha permitido a Lina fortalecer a través de la adquisición de licenciamientos y equipos el laboratorio de imagen y análisis dimensional de la Coordinación Nacional de Monumentos Históricos y justamente también para organizar el curso que hoy termina. En 2022 se inauguró, gracias nuevamente al apoyo ofrecido por Hungría, la exposición México y Hungría, vínculos y coincidencias en el ámbito cultural, en el Museo del Esconvento de Tepoztlán. Todas estas actividades son muestras del fortalecimiento de los lazos de amistad entre Hungría y México. Después de 10 días de trabajo arduo que se ha generado a través de este curso que en español yo denominaría eh, del espacio a los datos, métodos de encuesta inteligente en arquitectura y arqueología, me, me regañarán si no va por ahí, <risa> pero así lo entendería, el cual se impartió como ya se mencionó gracias al acuerdo de, de la aportación y de asistencia técnica firmado con el gobierno de Hungría, eh, en el marco del acuerdo de cooperación que se ha estado impulsando desde, desde 2017, pues eh, se ha logrado también, gracias al apoyo del de, eh, historiador, del doctor Salvador Rueda, quien eh, ha sido el anfitrión de este curso y de lo que ha representado la experiencia de eh, formación y de intercambio eh, generada a través de este espacio. El curso fue impartido por el doctor Sos Basarbos, cabeza del Departamento de Arquitectura Explorativa de la Universidad eh, de Tecnología y Economía de Budapest, 
Muchas gracias, este, doctor. Y por el maestro Mor Bendegueus eh, Takats, del Instituto de Arqueología de la Universidad Católica Pasmani Peter, eh, que eh, durante estos días eh, permitió a 27 profesionistas adscritos a los Centros Sina de Aguascalientes, Guanajuato, Sonora, Morelos, Nuevo León, San Luis Potosí, Sinaloa y Zacatecas, así como a la Escuela Nacional de Conservación, Restauración y Museografía y a las Coordinaciones Nacionales de Arqueología y Monumentos Históricos, contar desde luego con eh, lo que eh, representó eh, para esta ocasión eh, como invitados también a algunos miembros de la Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México. Los temas abordados referentes al criterio y uso de tecnologías abre desde luego nuevas ventanas para la protección, conservación y registro de patrimonio arqueológico, histórico y museístico de nuestro país. Desde luego, este es un paso fundamental para una mejor preservación de nuestra memoria y de nuestro patrimonio cultural. De verdad, muchas gracias a la Embajada de Hungría y muchas felicitaciones por su realización, por su organización, por parte de la Coordinación Nacional de Monumentos Históricos y de su coordinadora, la arquitecta Valeria Valeri. Pues eh, con ello eh, solamente me restaría eh, agradecer por su paciencia y su interés, su participación en este curso. Bueno, pues no, no resta más que eh, agradecer este, a todas las personas que hicieron posible la realización de este, de este curso. Eh, pues en primer lugar quisiera eh, agradecer nuevamente a los especialistas que viajaron y destinaron dos semanas de su valioso tiempo para impartir el curso, a Yolkia Beni, eh, muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much. I think an applause. <laughs> También nuestro mayor agradecimiento a todos los participantes de los distintos centros de trabajo del INA y de, de la UNAM. Hace unos momentos, pues ya vimos los resultados del trabajo que realizaron en este en este taller. Y bueno, pues muchísimas gracias a todos ustedes y muchísimas felicidades. Eh, pues. Eh, les, les pedimos que nos ayuden a difundir y a poner en práctica estos conocimientos pues, que han adquirido en estos, en estos días. Reiterar el mayor agradecimiento a la Embajada de Hungría en México, que a través de su programa Hungary Helps, pues hemos logrado muchas actividades de gran interés y de gran importancia para, para nuestro país. Eh, bueno, ya agradecimos, pero lo hago de nueva cuenta, al maestro Salvador Rueda y a todo el equipo del Castillo de Chapultepec, al equipo de INA TV, eh, como siempre, pues haciendo una labor eh, muy, muy profesional para poder pues, difundir y compartir estos momentos. En particular, pues yo quisiera agradecer al equipo de la Coordinación Nacional de Monumentos Históricos, que han eh, pues, estado este, desde hace ya muchos meses detrás de eh, pues toda la organización y la logística de este curso. Quisiera en particular agradecer a la doctora Juana Gómez Vadillo, organizadora del curso y que además fungió como enlace eh, con eh, nuestros especialistas húngaros. Y bueno, pues también a quien le debemos la idea del espacio seleccionado para llevar a cabo, a cabo este curso, junto con Rosana Trujillo, y por supuesto, como ya lo mencioné, el director del museo, el, el maestro Salvador Rueda. Eh, también quisiera agradecer a María Sánchez y Ángel Mora, que bueno, además de participantes en este curso, eh, pues también fueron eh, pieza clave en la logística, en el diseño, en eh, pues las actividades de estos, de estos diez días. También, por supuesto, a todo el equipo de informática, también nos acompaña bueno, Marisela como participante, pero bueno, también... Jorge, Ayas y, y Erika, 
eh, también y muy especialmente a José María Almanza, que es nuestro subdirector administrativo, con todo, la, con todo su equipo de administración, nos acompaña también Gerardo el día de hoy. Estamos muy agradecidos a todo el equipo por, por lo que han logrado, por bueno, pues, imprimirle este, tanta, eh, eh, pues, eh, toda, tanta coordinación y este, interés a que todo saliera a la perfección. Muchísimas gracias a todos ustedes. Y bueno, pues ya para concluir agradezco al público que nos sigue hoy por INA TV, por el interés por estos temas y bueno, pues no me resta más que ya despedirnos y bueno, a los que estamos hoy aquí presentes, eh, ofrecerles eh, aquí afuera en la terraza eh, pues un brindis para eh, pues ya clausurar eh, oficialmente y bueno, pues tener un espacio más pues para dialogar este, y para pues conversar acerca de eh, los resultados eh, obtenidos en el curso. Muchísimas gracias y muy buenas tardes a todos ustedes. Gracias. 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 Gracias.